Pastor Edward. God bless everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. I think you know that Komasi Accra, Agana, my second home. I started coming 46 years ago. I was in Kumasi before many of you were born. Now we are together. God is going to do wonderful things in your life. Full salvation. Total healing. Yes. Say it's mine. Yes, you got it already. Yes, Father, we thank you for today. A glorious, happy day for us. And we thank you because of what you are going to do. You are here with your power for everyone. I'm asking, Lord, that tonight nobody will miss your blessing in Jesus' name. Yeah. Send forth your power upon everyone. Send forth your salvation to everyone. And send forth your healing deliverance on everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down the blessing of the Lord. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. Look at this. Heal me, O Lord and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. For thou art my praise. You see the combination of the two things there? Healing and salvation. Salvation and healing. And we're asking for that from the Lord. The Lord who is able. The Lord who can do all things. And the Lord who has promised you that if you come, he will not drive you away. And so Jeremiah comes and he speaks with faith. And he demands with assurance. And he said, you are the focus of my life and you are the source of my salvation and healing. He said, heal me, O Lord, and I know I shall be healed. If you say that in your heart today, if you believe that in your heart today, if you affirm, confess that in your mind today, tonight you'll be healed. And then he said, save me and I shall be saved. No doubt. No unbelief. He believed from the death of his heart. Save me and I, I, I shall be saved. Tonight is your night. Full salvation. Total healing. Kumasi, amen, is not like I, when I came before. And then he tells us in James chapter 5. Reading from verse 15. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The prayer of faith shall heal, shall save. What else are we expecting? 
Christ died on the cross for you. Because of that death of Christ, salvation is sure. He bore your stripes. And because of those uh, stripes on Christ, you must be healed. And it's a prayer of faith that does both. Please, don't put an impossibility on your condition. Also accept. And you believe. That the prayer of faith tonight will avail for you. The Lord will surprise you with a miracle. The prayer of faith for full salvation and total healing. Three things we're looking at tonight. Number one. We're looking at accepting the benefits of joint together uh, salvation benefit joined together by God God has joined together salvation and healing he has joined together freedom and forgiveness and because he joined them together you can ask for two, uh, one don't go yet then you get the second double miracle for you tonight Accepting the benefit joined together by God. Number two, asking for blessings joined together in His goodness. He said, Come and I'll bless you. What are the blessings? The twin blessing of salvation and healing. Number three, acknowledging and believing as joined together by his grace. You see, I emphasize joined together. Salvation and healing. And God has joined them together. Some people say, I believe in salvation. My challenge is, I don't believe in healing. What God has joined together, let no theology and let no idea and let no opinion put us under. He joined healing and salvation together. Keep them together. Believe them together. And you're happy tonight in your body, in your spirit, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Number one, accept. Number two, you are asking. Number three, acknowledge. Both are yours tonight. Give me a good, good amen. Yes. Number one. Number one now. Accepting the benefits joined together by God. Look at Psalm 103 verse 1. It says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse number two, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. It says, Forget not all his benefits. All the benefits God has promised you. All the promises, all the benefits that Christ provided on the cross of Calvary. When you pray, don't forget. When you say amen, don't forget. Before you go home, don't forget. As you are here tonight, don't forget. All 
his benefits for you coming upon your idea today what are they look at verse 3 in verse 3 who forgiveth all thine iniquities so he let all thy diseases he joined them together in one verse he joined them together at the victory that christ had on the cross of calvary forgiveness and healing He joined them together in the provision that he has made for you. Forgiveness and healing. He forgives all thine iniquities. How many of your sins, transgression and iniquity will he forgive tonight? Tell me. How many of your sicknesses, diseases, infirmity will he heal tonight? He'll heal, over, he'll heal you over there. Look at them over there. Healing is coming unto you. Over there, you especially. God has marked you down for salvation and healing. Look at Isaiah chapter 53. And I'm reading here from verse 4. It says, surely, there's no doubt here tonight. There's belief and faith here tonight. Surely, he has borne our griefs. And he has carried our sorrows. Yet, we did esteem him smitten of God and afflicted. Smitten of God on your behalf. You should have been smitten. But because Christ came to take your place. Now he is smitten so that there will be no smiting coming upon your life in Jesus name. Afflicted. You should have been afflicted. You earned affliction by the works of your hand, by the lifestyle you lived. You earned and you ought to have affliction. But Jesus says, no. What's your marriage, which is affliction, I take away from you. He comes to replace you. He comes to be your substitute. And so, instead of you being afflicted, Christ has been afflicted for you. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgression. That's how we have forgiveness, because Christ, your Savior, your Lord, your substitute, he has borne all that for you. And he, Christ, and he, Savior, and he, Redeemer, and he, our mediator, he has been wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Look at that. That's the area of your salvation. Iniquity taken away. Transgression forgiven. The yoke and the pressure and the uh, kind of bondage of sin broken away from your life. That's salvation. Now look at the latter part here. And with his stripes we are healed. Salvation and then healing. Join together in the same verse again. Look at verse 6. 
in verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. And we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. There's something to shout about. Something to praise him about. Because he laid on him the transgression, the sin, the evil, and the iniquity of us all. Matthew chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 16. In Matthew chapter 8 verse 16. When the evening was come. You know things have not changed. This evening here there everywhere when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word <clears throat> he didn't have to touch them one by one with his word he cast out all the evil spirit. And the word you are hearing tonight is not my word, it's his word. That's why I read it to you from his holy Bible. And as you hear, as you accept, as you believe, as you confess, that is mine. His word coming out from here, getting to you there, will heal you tonight. Pain, he'll take it away. That fever, malaria, he'll take it away. Typhoid will run away from your life. Your blind eyes will open. Your lame paralyzed legs will receive strength tonight. You will rise and walk. If I am talking about you, say a good amen. With his word, he drove out all their sicknesses. And Christ has not changed. His word has not changed. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But he said, my word shall never pass away. And he healed all that were sick. The same Jesus who had not changed, he healed all that were sick. The same God of love operating through Christ, his only begotten son. That love has not changed. He healed them all. Who is getting healed tonight? Where are they? Heaven has seen you there. He'll give you that healing. Who are getting saved tonight? Forgiving tonight, set free tonight. Where are they? Amen. Heaven confirms it in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, it says that age might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah, that's Isaiah, the prophet, saying himself, took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses have you noticed they are joined together there himself took our infirmities and then he bear our sicknesses that's why we have assurance tonight that salvation and healing will get to you there in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 2 
verse 24. It says who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That's for salvation. That we've been dead to sin should live unto righteousness. That's salvation, that's conversion, that's the new life. of his tribe because of his crucifixion because of his sacrifice because of his substitution we have salvation we have healing let me say it properly you have salvation you have healing double join together and what God has joined together in his promise, in his provision, in his power, let no one put asunder. In verse 25, verse 25 says, For ye were a sheep going astray. That's what I said in verse 6 of chapter 53. But are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. As you come to Christ tonight, salvation will be given to you. As you come to Christ tonight, healing will be your portion. Look at number two here. Point number two, Asking for blessings joined together in his goodness. Asking for the blessing. You're not just say, okay, if he wants to heal me, let him heal me. You will ask. I'm here, I'm here. If he wants to save me, let him save me. No, you will ask. Look at that Jeremiah again, chapter 17, in verse 14. It says, heal me, O Lord, he was asking. And everyone that asks, receives. If you count yourself, impossible to be healed. And you say, how old am I now? Am I looking for healing? I'm waiting for days. You, you have to ask if you're going to get healing from every infirmity and every ailment. Healing from long-standing sickness. Healing from a terminal disease. The healing that causes your pain. Pain in your body. Pain in your mind. Pain in your soul. And you are wondering, what's happening to me? Am I going and going and going? Will it be said soon? Gone. But you know, Everything will change tonight. In your body, everything will change tonight. Healing is coming to you. Strength is coming to you. Power is coming to you. Freedom is coming to you. Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. And then save me, and I shall be saved. Uh, the man could not save himself just like you cannot save yourself. No matter what power you have, you cannot save yourself from sin. No matter how religious you are. Jeremiah was religious, but he could not save himself. Save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved.
No matter how determined you are, I'll save myself. No, you cannot. You cannot. Nobody is able to save himself from the guilt of sin, from the power of sin, and from the habit of sin. Jeremiah could not do that. And so he prayed, save me, O Lord, and I shall be saved. How many times have you said, I will not do that anymore? I've made up my mind. I've determined. I will not do that anymore. And you made resolution. You're going to be saved by your resolution. You could not, you cannot, you will never be able, no matter who you are, save yourself from sin and get yourself ready for heaven by your own strength. You cannot. That's the reason why he prayed, save me and I shall be saved. And tonight is the night of your salvation. Uh, you know you are powerless, but he is powerful. You know it's impossible for you, but all things are possible with God. You know there is no sacrifice you can offer that will save you, but Christ has made the final and the full sacrifice. You will praise the Lord tonight. Joy of salvation will come to you. The victory we have in salvation, the triumph we have in salvation will come to you tonight. For thou art my praise. In Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 5, Mark chapter 2, reading from verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins are forgiven thee. You know, those four friends that carried this impotent man, they had love in their heart for that man. Did Jesus say when he saw their love? Then he said, your sins be forgiven thee. No. Some people say, God knows I love everyone. God knows I give my time to serve everyone. God knows I help everyone. Jesus did not say when he saw their help. When he saw the time they gave to the man. He said when he saw their faith. When he saw their friendliness, no. When he saw their hope, no. When he saw their faith, says, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's by faith. By grace, I was saved through faith. That not of yourself. Nothing you have done. No sacrifice you have made. No human love you have showed. No church attendance you have filled in any register. Can save your soul when he saw their faith. It's your faith in Christ. The Christ who died at Calvary. And the Christ who died to take your sins away. 
and you don't have confidence in your own personal right in your own human work but you have confidence and faith in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior that's why I'll be calling on you tonight you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you're asking for salvation you're asking for a change of life you are asking for transformation that only Christ can give I'll be calling on you tonight to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved and so when Jesus saw their faith and said to the man who was sick of palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, salvation, or to say, arise, Take up thy bed and walk, healing. Sins forgiven, salvation. Sickness healed, healing. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, But that she may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. The, uh, then he says unto the sick of the palsy. <clears throat> and then in verse 11, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Again, he didn't touch him. He didn't shake him. He didn't pour water on him. He didn't smear oil on him. He didn't throw his weight on him. His word. His declaration. That's what brought the healing. I say unto you, take up your bed and walk. And then go back to your house. You are going back to your house healed tonight. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, and immediately he arose, he took up his bed and went forth before them all before them all you will come before us all and give your testimony tonight it's, it's so much that they were amazed they were all surprised and glorified God saying we never saw it on this fashion Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 38. <clears throat> In Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good. Healing is of his goodness, not of your feeling. Not of your effort, not of your power, not of your determination. No, it's his goodness that brings the healing upon us. It says he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him.
Is God good tonight? Is God good tonight? Has his goodness changed? Has his love changed? Has his power changed? The same goodness that he went about with and healed all of them in his goodness is coming to you there tonight. I can just see you there rising up out of that wheelchair. I can just see you rubbing your eyes and say, am I seeing, am I seeing? Because your sight has returned tonight. I can see you throwing away those sticks and then standing and shaking a little and saying, no, God is still good. God is still good. And take the first step and the second step, you will walk tonight. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 3. In First Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. He said this is good. What's he talking about? This is good. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 it says, Who will have all men to be saved? This is good. He wants all men, all women, all boys, all girls here tonight to be saved. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. Good salvation will come your way tonight. Good healing will come to your way tonight. He wants all, all there, there, here, there, online, everywhere to be saved and to be healed tonight. Look at number three now. Number three, we're looking at acknowledging and believing as joined together by his grace. What God has joined together, grace confirms in our lives. Healing, salvation that God has joined together, God provides them for you, for all, by grace tonight. Acknowledging, believing, as joined together by His grace. In Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 45, it says, And blessed is she, and he also, that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were uh, told her from the Lord. It says, Blessed or blessed, is the person who believed. You are the person. I believe. I acknowledge the blessing he brings to me tonight. That will come to you. And there will be a performance of everything you have heard that God has promised and provided salvation to you himself in his goodness and by his grace. As you believe, it's yours tonight. Verse 47. In verse 47, And my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. That's the evidence of believing. I hear, I accept. I hear, I ask. I, I ask and I acknowledge. And my soul rejoices because he fulfills his promise in my life. 
Acts chapter 27, verse 25. In Acts 27, 25, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be, even as it was told me. I am told if I ask for salvation, you will save me right now. I am told if I ask for healing, he'll heal me now. Then I'm of good cheer. I'm happy. I'm excited about this. I believe God that it shall be even as it has been told me. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. What do I speak? I say, God said he will save me. I'm here. I know he'll save me now. I believe so I speak. He said he will heal me. He will deliver me. I only need to call upon him. Yes, Lord. I believe. And so I speak. I declare it. Hey, look at Isaiah chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 24. Isaiah 33. Reading from verse 24. And the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick. The people who come before him in his presence to the crusade tonight, here and online, after the prayer, after the final amen, shall not say, I am sick. My friend there tonight, brother, sister there tonight, the people that come here, participates in the preaching, participates in the prayer, shall not say, I am sick. You are not sick anymore. That's healing. Look at the second part. The people that dwell therein shall be forgiven. Their iniquity. That's salvation right there. The Lord has joined them together. The healing, the salvation. The forgiveness and the freedom. It is yours tonight. What are you? I said it is yours tonight. Full salvation. Not partial salvation. That he takes away some sins and then you are still struggling and battling with other sins. So that's partial. Full salvation. Tonight is yours for the asking. Who wants salvation? You raise up your hand, it comes upon you instantaneously. Anybody wanting um, healing there? What are you? You raise up your hand, it comes to you instantaneously. Tonight is my night. I want you to say it. Let me over here hear you. Let heaven hear you. Registered in your name, in Jesus' name. Ready for salvation right now? I said, are you ready for that salvation right now? It's bowed and eyes closed. 
Congrats, salvation comes to you right now. It's bowed, eyes closed. You're asking for this salvation of the Lord that He will forgive every sin you ever committed in life. He'll break the yoke of sin. He'll set you free. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. Your salvation that Christ provided at Calvary has come to you tonight. Raise up that hand. I'm looking for you. Raise up that hand there. I'm looking for you. Online, everywhere. Stand up and raise up that hand. On the radio, on the television. Stand up, raise up your hand. Salvation is coming to you. As you are raising up your hand, I want you to stand up. Salvation has come. Angels are rejoicing because of you. He'll forgive every sin. You raise up your hand, you stand up. Don't look here and there. Stand up. And then you open your mouth and ask, Oh Lord, I need your salvation. I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe you are ready to write my name in the book of life. I believe with that salvation, with that freedom, with that forgiveness, eternal life comes to me right now. Stand up. I'm praying for you now. The front and the back, everywhere, please stand up. The prayer for your salvation is what we're praying now. Let us pray. Good God, loving Father, thank you because you are impartial. You accept everyone who comes ever deep in the valley of sinfulness ever high in the on the mountain of crime everyone who comes everyone who calls everyone who confesses and they demand and ask for the salvation Christ has provided you will not reject anyone. Lord, all these that are asking for salvation, asking for forgiveness, asking for freedom from the power of sin, grant them that salvation in Jesus' name. And forgive all their sins. Wipe away all their transgression. Blot out all the dirty, dirty things in their record up there with you in Jesus' name. Yes. Take their sin from even your remembrance and even their own remembrance as well. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because your forgiveness has come to everyone asking for that forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Because real salvation, definite salvation, the salvation that makes us new creatures in Christ, that salvation has come to everyone asking, believing, Pray that your spirit, the Holy Ghost, will bear witness with their spirit, their heart. They are now saved. And let angels rejoice in heaven because of the salvation you have brought to them. 
let there be that experience of salvation and the evidence of that salvation. And Lord, let a new life become the expression of the salvation you have given to them today. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing, our counselors, members of the choir, ushers, all the prepared counselors. Welcome to you now. Our Basia will not take over to lead us in this counseling time. That's one. Remember, there's a second one. The Lord has joined for the salvation, and we'll get that to you before we go in Jesus' name. The decision you have taken tonight is the greatest decision of life. Allow the counselors to get your particulars. Your name, your phone number, and all the details that will help us to really assist you to continue in this salvation. It's not enough to raise up your hand at the stadium here. Jesus said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. So counselors, get closer to them, write down their names and all the details you need to put down. By the grace of God, I know you are born again and you are going to give correct name, correct address, correct phone number. Our goal is to assist you to continue in the faith. If you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, so we are so there is a link gckhq.org slash connect gckhq slash connect below your player please visit the link and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via the radio or television, and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp. Or send to plus 234-91-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-2-
you are brave, you have to be focused and serious with the decision you have taken. And uh, as you are directed and taught and encouraged by the grace of God, this decision is going to remain with you permanently till you leave this world. And your decision is just like a new baby that has been born. It is the duty of the mother to take care of the child to be able to grow. The decision you have taken tonight spiritually is you are a newborn babe in Christ. And it is up to the counselors, the pastors, and the leaders over you to make sure that we bring you up in the Lord, to be able to stand firm. It's for your own good. Maybe you have taken such decisions before, but you did not pursue. We want to encourage you that tomorrow by 3 p.m., come to this place at the canopy at the stadium there, and we will give you all you need to be able to stand. Counselors, we want you to get closer to the people who gave their lives, make sure that proper documentation is made on their behalf. Also, there is going to be Converse Rally. There will be a special online banquet for all those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday, 4th August. Our pastor, the convener, will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. Also, there's going to be Alpha Locations Believers Banquet on Sunday. As I've said, 4th August 2024. At all deeper life Bible churches all over the globe and also at the Alpha location, wherever we have deeper life location, you can get closer. And then you'll be instructed as to what to do. The time will be 3 p.m. So, counselors, make sure that you are doing good work on the people who surrender their lives to Christ. This night. Give correct information. And the counselors also should write the correct information given. And if you have finished. You can signify by raising up the flag so that we know where you are where you have reached. Also, there is going to be some announcements hurry up and make sure that you write down their names, their phone numbers, and the places where they are living. 
what tree one a dean one telephone number and be a whole door or what it's in you our goal is to help you to be established in the faith yeah but i didn't say that we are not in team gdr our goal is to help you to continue in the decision you have taken. When everything is over, your decision can give you a better destiny. You need to be fed on the, with the word of God. It's when we know you, when we see you, we'll be able to do all those things. Counselors signify by raising up the flag if you are finished. Don't forget, if you are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening, there's a link, gckhq.org slash connect below your player. Please visit the link and fill out the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Mamoti and Khan, I would make the online so no link no ego as here. Obache, now a beer page, you know, now would be beer for so, now make my for Sakran so, a boar, a moting team, a ready moon. Also, if you are listening via the radio or tele television and you just surrender your life to Christ, please send your name, your phone number. And your location address via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. If I show Utia, Utia and radio, so and I television, so and I can you say be as well. What's up, Lenny? Ababua, Amodin, a copy, baby, Baba, a plus two, a plus two three four nine one. Five four 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 nine two six three. Counselors, please signify for us to know where you are. I can't for me who be a Madru. But also be a pigeon and sell on me who know not yet to me. I hear Abwa. A BIA who know about who know now so on me who know you. But you will be a pigeon and sell on me. Okay, others should please signify so that the next aspect of the program will come up. There will be special meeting called Lunch Hour with Jesus for all those who gave their lives to Jesus tomorrow at 3 p.m. at the stadium here where we have the canopy. Please take note and show your seriousness for the decision you have taken tonight by meeting the counselors at the stadium here 3 p.m. before the evening program starts. So all the Bible, deeper life Bible churches globally, as well as the Alpha location here, there's going to be Believers Banquet on Sunday, 4th August 2024. Well, deeper life and so we are singing, and so if you are a counselor, you have finished your part, please let us know about it. 
What about yearless seeds who have finished over there? Okay. 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 So at this time, we want to call upon our convener and our pastor to come and continue. Thank you, God bless you. Amen. Amen. I see your healing coming your direction and coming to you tonight. You are welcome that healing. You accept. You ask. I'll be asking for you here. You acknowledge. I said you acknowledge. And you're welcome that healing. Amen. Raise up that hand. And lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Your healing has come. We're going to pray now. We're asking. You will receive over there. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless your name for your love and compassion, for your goodness and grace that will never fail. I ask for everyone, brother, sister, man, woman, boy, girl, Lord, I pray their healing and deliverance will come to them now in Jesus' name. Mental problem, lunacy, I command, come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Blindness, I command you, get out. And my brother, my sister, my daughter, my son there, receive your sight in Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are deaf and dumb, oh Lord, let their hearing come back to them. Take away the dumbness and they will speak well in Jesus' name. Any swelling in the tummy, in the under the arm, in the feet, anywhere, swelling, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Also be healed in Jesus name. Cancer be healed in Jesus name. Paul be healed in Jesus name. With pain come out in Jesus name. That tiredness I cannot walk a few feet I have to I have to rest all the tiredness all the weak heart, Lord, I pray, strength will come to them. Amen. Healing will come to everyone. Amen. Confirm it in every life, in Jesus' name. Amen. High blood pressure become normal right now, in Jesus' name. Head injury be healed in Jesus' name. <laughs> Paralysis come out in Jesus' name. Rise up and walk. In the power of the Lord, rise up and walk. Lord, I pray everyone now without exception. To the right, to the left, to the back, to the middle, to the front, online, over the television, over the radio, your healing arrives 
right now. Be healed. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. It is done. For my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter there, it is done. Here and online, everywhere, it is done. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. A pastor now. It is done.